BJ. Nick, yeah. How are you, man? Good to see, Good to you, see you too, man. Good to see you. I'm always finding you in the most beautiful places in America. Right. This is uh, this is Hollins, North Carolina. I don't think it gets much prettier than this. No wonder you never left Carolina. We don't brag about it too much. We we try to keep it a secret. So. <laughs> <laughs> man and you just came back from red rock from red rocks you said and, yeah and you playing in a beautiful mountains like this i mean that that can never get old right? it doesn't uh i'm very fortunate we played red rocks on thursday we had day off yesterday to travel and then today we're in another beautiful mountain town uh so it's i consider myself very lucky um i played every menu venue from east coast to west coast so it's finally nice to to be at a spot where you're playing just these scenic places every day. It's, it's pretty It's pretty nice. BJ and Cryer, amazing. Thanks. The, the album as well, got a preview, man, just a preview, like, fantastic stuff. Thank you. How was the um, the recording process in LA, man? Because first time you did it in Historic Studios, and, right? And it was great. We did Sunset Sound. Uh, this is our second record with Shooter out in Los Angeles, um, but this is the first time we went into like one of those classically historic studios. You know, the Beach Boys did Pet Sounds. You know, say no more. Say no more. Say no more. <laughs> um, you know, there's pictures like we were sitting on some amps, and there's pictures of like the Rolling Stones in the same studio, sitting on amps in the exact same space. It's you walk into places like that, and you realize that that you're lucky to be doing this. And and not only are you lucky, like you've earned a spot at the table. You deserve to be in places like that, and that's a a very fun thing to finally be at a point in your career where you're still one, still making music. Uh, we, we're 18 years in now, and still able to make music, still able to make records that, that people care about. Um, so I'm just, you're never going to hear me complain. I feel like the luckiest guy in the world. And you're just getting better and better, man. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Writing the That's always the goal. That's always the goal is to try to push and be a better writer today than I was yesterday. But um, I'm thankful that people think that. <laughs> Let me ask you this. When you are like, you know, with another, with a, the same producer for the second album in a row, like, yeah. with, like with Shooter, Is that like, what is that like? Like when you go back, is it like a, like a deeper second date? Like that's exactly what it is. I was getting ready to say the exact same thing. It's a second date. Um, sometimes on your first date, um, you find out what you like about the person, what you don't like about the person. Then you have to make a decision whether or not you want to do that date again. Um, Shooter was like the perfect first date. Uh, <laughs> he fits right. Then dined you. He wine and dined us. Uh, but he, but bigger than that, he. He fit into our band. He was like the seventh member of our band. Yeah. Um, he was so great at communicating, so great at empowering us, reminding us that we were good enough to be there, but also giving good ideas. Sure. If there was ever a moment to change, he always approached it. He understands how precious these songs are to us. So he's always, he understands that balance of, I'm going to offer some suggestions, um, but I also want you to know that like you guys are great. Yeah. And like he, he never... There's no ego. Sure. There's no trying to be the coolest guy in the room or the biggest voice in the room. All every single person cares about is making the best record we can make. And Shooter is the king of that. And uh, there's a reason we went back to him a second time. And there, there's a reason we probably won't make a record with anybody else for a while. Um, Shooter's kind of our guy. Like, uh, And I've made some great records with some great producers. And I'm not knocking anybody. But Shooter fits what this version of this band does really well, which is get in a room, play the songs live, and be a rock and roll band. Sure. We're not a songwriter with a house band behind them. We're a band yeah. who just so happens to be fronted by a songwriter. Um, so he's really good at showing off what we're good at and helping us cover up some of the things we're not so good at. <laughs> <laughs> BJ, yeah, we talked a little bit off camera about Katie Pruitt. Yeah. That's why I bring her up. I, I obviously love Katie, one of my good friends, but she really seems to have a very deep place in her heart for you yes um like to like to a very special place not just because you're a great human but i think the southern route and yeah a little bit of that what do you attribute that special connection I, i think we're both artists we're both southern artists we're both loud outspoken opinionated southern artists um from the minute i met her from the minute we walked into a room together and i got to say hello to her yeah it was very very clear that we were going to be friends for a very long time um and she's somebody who i still text if i see anything that reminds me of her or i see her name on a lineup or a name on a venue it's always a quick text to be like i'm proud of you i hope you're doing well and she does the same for me and, and we're very lucky me and her co-wrote a song on this new record of ours uh and she was kind enough to sing on it and uh if, if you haven't listened to katie pruitt and you're out there 
there's not a better voice for my money than Katie Pruitt. She's she's got the voice, she's got the songs, she's got the attitude, she's got the guitar play, and uh, she's an absolute threat. And it's uh, I love her to death. I created that DJ. Let me leave you with this. You're gonna rock and roll tonight. Then. Yeah. You know, but, uh, you know, you, obviously we were just talking about like your daughter's six and stuff like that. What's parent corner like for you nowadays? I love it. Um, I never thought I wanted to be a parent until I became a parent, and now it's like I've got a cool job being a rock and roller but the coolest job I'm ever going to have is being a dad like that's I never thought it could get cooler than this traveling around from beautiful place to beautiful place but being a dad is is up there and uh I've prioritized being a father yeah I, I've taken a lot more time off the road like we don't play shows in the summer anymore I, I, I take unless it's like a festival that I can fly into and fly right back out of my, Pearl's in school now my daughter his name's Pearl um And when she's out of school, I want to be there for her. I want to be able to travel and go on road trips and go to the beach and, and just be a dad. Absolutely. I've got the other, you know, nine months out of the year to be a rock and roller. Yeah. But those three months during the summer, I want to be her dad. And, uh, yeah, I'm trying to raise her to understand what I do, trying to make it normal, which this is a very abnormal thing that we do. But I think I'm doing a good job. I think she gets what dad does. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, doesn't hate me for it. So I feel like I'm on the right track. I kill me. Said it all, man. Appreciate it, brother. It's the tension to go. Man. Thanks for, thanks for always taking the time to talk to me. Appreciate it, man. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here for the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from j Concerts Media.